in today's lesson, gentlemen, we can put away our cell phones now. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue factoring, but we're going to take factoring to a whole new level today. We're going to factor when we have radicals and negative exponents, or rational expressions. How do we factor? So that is the lesson, basically, today. We have to review our exponent laws. So really quickly, if we're multiplying with the same base, what do we do with our powers? Add them. Okay, if we are have a power on the outside of a bracket. What happens with that power? It applies to everybody inside. Uh, what page are we on? P four. four. Yeah, it's at the top of four. When we're dividing with the same base, we subtract. Power of quotient law, same idea as the power of product law. That n applies to everybody inside. Anything, oh, let's do this one. Anything to the power of zero? One. And a power to a power? We multiply, A times B. Okay? Moving on? Yes? Okay. Oh, it's right there. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Anything to the power of zero is one. X to the power of negative one. What is that? E one over X. Good. X to the power of negative A. One over X to the positive A. It moves to the denominator to become positive. It's like the passport or something. Right? It's like a ticket to move across the border. Once you move across the border, then you, your ticket is gone. No? Okay, moving on. <laughs> See? He's in, the, he's in the United States right now. He's got a ticket to fly to Canada. So he flies to Canada, and now his ticket's gone. <laughs> just, just the negative the ticket. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so remember uh, power over root, or... Did I tell you about flower power over root? Yeah. yeah? Remember back in the day? No? Okay, so uh, flower power, so the power is on top, the root or the index is on the bottom. So if we have x to the power of a over b, b is the, the root, the bottom is the root, just like a tree or a flower, the roots are on the bottom. So that tells us the index or the radical for the radical, and then the power is on top. Okay, uh, there's two ways. You can also write this as the, the uh, power of A on the inside or on the outside. Remember, we usually apply the radical first because mentally it's easier to make a number smaller before we make it bigger. That means, yeah. Oh. Okay, woo. Simplify. Can you guys solve one, two, three, and four? Because you can do it. I do. I believe. Okay, so these ones are pretty basic, right? Let's go to number three. Um, here, ends with positive exponents. So first off, what about the z to the zero? It's just one, so we don't need to have it there, right? So who's going to move? Both the who? Just the x and the y, not the five and the eight. Well, the negative exponent, <laughs> who does the negative exponent touching? Is it touching the 5? No. If it was touching the 5, it would look like this. Oh. That negative 2 is only applying to the x. So it's 5y to the positive 3 over x to the positive 2. Can you even more and say, like, oh, I No. That's it. Okay, so it has, the negative exponent has to own, if it's going to apply to it, it'll be in brackets if it's like a bunch of things. Okay, evaluate. So let's change this to a radical. So this is not using our calculators. 
Okay, where's the three go? Who's the power root? Power. Do you have to write an index of two? No. No, what's the square root of 25? Five. Please tell me what five cubed is. 125. Got to memorize those. Yes. Right. Yep, that's the root. It's been a while since you've seen this stuff, eh? Math 10. Yep. Was that the last time you saw this? Oh, you'll see it again a lot in 3-1. Uh, okay. Yep, I promise. We have a whole logs and exponents unit. Hopefully, you'll, I think they'll complement each other. Of course. Okay. Um, now, before I multiply, it might be sim better to simplify everything first. So, let's look at this. 6 divided by 8, can we reduce that fraction? Uh, divide both by 2, and it's 3 over 4. Okay? Now, subtracting, 7 minus a negative 1 is positive 8. Right? Here with the x, we're going 7 minus a negative 1. When we subtract a negative, we're actually adding. Okay, the y's, negative 2 minus 4. Negative 2 minus 4. Negative 6. And then the z's still there. Times. Can you reduce 10 thirds? No. Let's leave this at 10 thirds. So negative 2 minus 3. Negative 5. It's okay. Y to the 5. And does it bring the z to the numerator? Because we're just trying to bring, have everything on, instead of writing all divided by z z to the negative 1. So we've brought it to the numerator. Yeah, we're not done. So now we can multiply. So 3 over 4 times 10 over 3. Does anyone know? No, 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 no. We are above that. Okay. Okay, what can we do here? Um, you can multiply, then reduce, or you can reduce, then multiply. So what can we reduce here? What's one on the, the threes and the four and the ten? The threes reduce to one over one. We can divide those both by three. So you should be able, if you could do that in your head, right away I know it's ten divided by four. The threes will cancel out. And ten over four, we could divide both by two. So one times five, two times one. So useful, right? Because with mental math, you want to make numbers smaller before you make them bigger. So before, in, in junior high, you multiply, then you reduce. That's always what they teach you, right? Multiply, reduce. It's helpful to reduce, then multiply. So 5 over 2. Okay, x to the 8 times x to the negative 5. What are we doing when we multiply same bases? Adding 8 plus negative 5. Okay, negative 6 plus 5, negative 1, and then 1 plus negative 1, 0. Do we have, do you have to write it? No. Okay, and we have to answer with positive exponents. So we'll put the 5 with the x and the 2 with the y. Because 5 was on the numerator, 2 was on the denominator. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah, good? Okay, a lot coming at you, right? So you guys are, you're, you are, you are my guinea pigs. Unfortunately, because you're the first group of 3-1, so it's different curriculum, and so what do you know is different than 30 peers knew, right? Okay, you noticed? Yeah. Um, okay, let's change this to exponential form first. Because that might be easier. So how do we change a radical to exponential form? Remember, flower power over root. So which one goes on top? 2 over 3. Right? Power over root. Power over root. And we can use that power because that a power is applying to everybody. And that root of 3, the cubic root, was applying to everybody. 
Okay, let's apply this guy in. So we have a to the two-thirds. Don't forget the constant. He's often forgot. X to the power to power, what are we going to do? Multiply. So 6 times 2 thirds. Again, 6 divided by 3. 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Right? So 6 times 2 over 3. We can reduce this to 2 over 1, which is 4. And Y, negative 4 times 2 thirds is? Remember fractions, we multiply straight across. Negative 8 over 3. <laughs> okay, we can actually, any numbers we actually want to evaluate. So this is cubic root of 8 all squared. Yeah, cubic root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Good. X to the 4 and the negative exponent we're going to put... There, the bottom. We have a tough lesson today a little bit, especially because it hasn't been since grade 10 yep. since you've seen this. Oh, it'd be positive. Thank you. Come on, <laughs> sorry. What did I do? This? This one? <laughs> this part? The cubic root of 8 squared. The cubic root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So any numbers we actually have to actually we have to evaluate. Can't leave it as a exponent. Okay? So you might need to practice this weekend your exponent lots. Just maybe. Okay, so can we get to something new? No. Uh oh. Okay, so new stuff. Factoring power expressions. So how do we factor if there's negative exponents or fractional exponents? Totally new to you, right? For sure. Converting all variables to exponential form. So what I mean by that is if you had 1 over x to the 6, you're actually going to convert this to x to the negative 6. Or if you have a radical, we're going to convert that to a fraction. Okay, so everything we want in exponential form. No fractions, no radicals. We're going to change them. So negatives are okay. Bring all powers to the numerator. So that's what we did here. Convert all fractions to lowest common denominator. That probably doesn't make sense yet. We'll go through some examples. Factor out the smallest power. So which one's smaller? X to the negative 5, X to the negative 3, or X to the negative 9? Yeah, so always factor out the smallest power. So the smallest power in this example would be x to the negative 9. Right? Because it's negative, so it's smaller than x to the negative 3. It's going to make them positive. Because, like, if I divide this by x to the negative 9, negative 5 minus negative 9 is going to turn into a positive. So that's what we want in the end. Okay, so let's go through some examples. Uh, this should leave the exponents positive. Here's an example, but let's try this. Okay. <laughs> Remember when math wasn't on steroids? Okay, so... Hmm? <laughs> this? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll use the letters now. Okay, how do I write this as a fractional exponent? 5 over 2, Landon. How do I write the next one as a fractional exponent? <laughs> 3 over 2, thank you. I almost moved you to the front, young man. Okay, x to the, what, how do we write the last one as a fractional exponent? 1 over 2, the index if you can't see it. Okay, so the question is, who's the smallest? We have 5 over 2, 3 over 2, and 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is the smallest. So we're going to factor out the smallest. So how are we going to factor it out? Divide everybody by x to the 1 half. So x to the 1 half is going to go in the front. And to figure out what goes inside, 
We divide everybody by x to the 1 half. Okay, we can do this. Yeah? <laughs> okay, what's 5 minus over 2 minus 1 over 2? 4 over 2 or 2. Remember, we just subtract the tops, leave the bottom. So 4 over 2. If you have 5 slices of pizza, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so x squared. Minus, the 2 still goes there. 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2. 2 over 2, which is 1. So just x to the power of 1. This is turning out to be really pretty. And x, anything divided by itself? 1, can we factor that? Two numbers that multiply to positive 1, add to negative 2. Simple trinomial. Right? Multiply to positive 1, add to negative 2. It's negative 1 and negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1 minus or plus negative 1, negative 2. Simple trinomial, right? Oh, but <laughs> what do you mean? In, in your scientific? No, I did. You can. My hope is this go is going on in your head. <laughs> Right? When you're in university, there's going to be courses that are no calc. So get used to it now. When you have like the, you have your security blankie with you. So if you need it, you can pick it up. But practice, right? Okay, let's try another one. Do you want to try this one on your own? Yes, try this one on your own. Be brave. How we learn is through mistakes. It's a link. It's not there? No. I put it on. Okay, well, we'll uh, so on the, is it there now? Yeah. Oops, I know. That's okay. So people at home, if you obviously know where to get the videos from. <laughs> but under pre-calculus, it should be right here. Just click on that. No, that's, let's go back to our lesson. Okay, so sorry people at home, back to the lesson. Okay, how do we uh, deal with, if it's on the denominator, where are we going to move it? To the numerator. <laughs> so what does this guy become? x to the negative 3 plus 5x to the negative 4 minus 24x to the negative 5. What's the smallest power here? Negative 5, so he is going to factor out. So we're going to divide each and every one by x to the negative 5. Figure out what goes inside. And this is where if you're subtracting a negative, what are we actually doing? Adding a positive. So negative 3 plus 5, negative 3 plus 5, x squared is 2, negative 3 plus 5. Pardon me? Okay, plus 5. So negative 4 minus negative 5, or negative 4 plus 5, 1. And minus 24, and what happens with x to the negative 5? They're gone. Yeah, reduce out. And because there are two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to positive 5. 8 and 3. How do they do it so Times, knowing your times tables, right? It's okay. If you have to, you make a product tree, right? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, right? But it's a tree. Not really. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, so x plus 8, x minus 3. Answering in the original form. How do we answer the original form? Yeah, or we can just actually write this as x plus 8 times x plus 3 all divided by x to the 5. Thank you.
I just know I don't really have to pay attention to those little details because you'll all tell me. <laughs> Sorry, that's not a good attitude. Just kidding. Okay, factor. I would like you to try this one on your own now. Yeah, be brave. We move x to the 4 to the numerator, and it becomes negative when we move it up. And now, factor out the smallest exponent. What's the smallest exponent? Negative 4. So x to the negative 4 is what you're factoring out. So x to the negative 4 is what you're going to factor out. Divide both by x to the negative 4. Okay, that gives us the x to the negative 4 is gone. Just 8. Minus 2 minus a negative 4, 2 plus 4, so positive 6. Now that is a perfect cube. 8 and x to th this can be divided by 3, and this, the 8 is a perfect cube, right? You need to know your perfect cubes. So remember the formula for the difference? of cubes. Does anyone remember it? If you had a cubed minus b cubed, a minus b squared plus a b plus b squared. So how do I get what a is? How do we, so this is on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it. So cubic root of a, of a will tell me what my a value is. So 2, right? 2 cubed is 8. My b value, what's the cubic root of x to the 6? x squared. It just puts it, it's 6 divided by 3. If we write it as power over root, 6 over 3. Okay, so that is my a and b. So this can be fat. Uh, I'm going to actually write this on the bottom. Can I do that right away? Yes. Yeah? No, no, Cody. Uh, and then factored out the negative? You'd have to. You'd have, because it has, right, the negative in the formula is here. So you'd have to actually factor out the negative. So you did cubic root of, but you can't, oh yeah, you can't, and then negative x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as long as you have negative x. Okay, negative x squared. Yeah. Uh, but it's, okay, anyway, so moving on, that becomes 2, a minus b, so 2 minus x cubed, x squared, silly me, 4 plus, 2x squared. Shh. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> and then the power of 2. So x squared squared is x to the 4. And all over x to the power of 4. Now, you technically, if you wanted to, if you wanted to be keen, you could take this one step further. A difference of squares. <laughs> root 2 minus x, root 2 plus x. You don't have to. I'm not going to require that of you. I just want you to be rec to recognize that. So if you ever come across that in the future, okay? And that is our solution. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, so you weren't here. So that's why. So we can actually do difference of squares. We would just write it as root two minus x root two plus x. So in calculus, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. We we got to let's not waste time. Um, should we try this one or do we want to skip this one? Uh, it's very similar to what we just did. Oh, I know why we need to do this one. Okay, let's do this one. How do we write uh, this? X to the power of? 9 over 4. 
minus 2 thirds x to the power of 1 over 4. Okay, so what if we have fractions? What you need to do is get a lowest common multiple of the denominators. So 2 and 3, what's the lowest common multiple for the denominators? 6. So if I want to make this equivalent fraction with 6 on the bottom, what do we have to multiply the bottom by? 3. So the numerator is going to be 3 times 3, 9. Okay, so we want to make this guy a 6. What do we have to multiply him by to make it a 6? What do we multiply 3 by to make 6? 2. So 2 times 2, 4. So we're just making equivalent fractions. That, word, that should sound familiar to you. Right? From rational expressions in 20-1. Okay, so now, here's the thing. We're going to factor out the fra fraction. Because our denominator is 6, 9 and 4, is there a common factor? No. 9 and 4? No, but 6, we're not, don't, you're jump, you're, it's probably going to be a difference. Square is probably, but we're not there yet. Okay, so there is none, but on the denominator, we can factor out the 6. How do we do it? We're actually factoring out 1 6. Okay, we're going to take out the 1 6. What's the smallest power? A quarter or 9 fourths? A quarter. So we're actually factoring out the 1 6. When you take 9 over 6 and divide it by 1 6, what are we left with? 9. We're just left with a numerator. Would you agree that if I distributed log the binomial here, 1 6 times 9 is 9 6? Yes. Uh, okay, what's 9 over 4 minus 1 over 4? 8 over 4? 2. Minus, so what's going to be left over here since we pull out the 1 6? The 4. And now we have a difference of squares. That guy, we can handle that, right? Life is good. 3x minus 2, 3x plus 2. Precalculus is one of the hardest units, so if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's normal. I validate that feeling. Because <laughs> these are skills that we're going to need all throughout calculus. So it's, it's still... Okay. Uh, to get full marks, our last step... <laughs> the last step is to write it in the original form. It was originally given to us as a radical. So I'd rewrite this as 1. Oh, you can actually even do this instead if you wanted to. You don't have to. Fourth, so if the original form was uh, in radical form, I'm going to finish off back in radical form. So change this back to 4, fourth root of x. I put the 6, I just made it, I thought that looked nice. You don't have to. You could write 1, 6 in front of this if you want still. I like it. It's nice, you know. And then 3x minus 2, 3x plus 2. So the, you always put it back in the original form given at the end. The fourth root. The fourth root. <laughs> it's really different the squares. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's go. Did you want to try this one? Sure. Try this on your own. Give it a shot. Remember, x has to be on the numerator. It's a fun one. Oh, yeah. Don't turn the page yet. Okay, <laughs> just, just, no, 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 this one. Just finish off this guy. Okay, so first step, 40 over 3x to the negative 1 minus 6 over 5x. I like to write those separately. Okay? 
lowest common denominator will be 15. So I have to time the first guy by 5, top and bottom. 5 times 4, 40. So 215, x to the negative 1. And times top and bottom by 3, be minus 18 over 15x. Okay. Oh, wait a second, because I feel some of you are... You ready? You don't cross multiply. Okay? The only time you ever do cross multiply is a ratio equaling a ratio. It's the only time ever. Okay, so here, let's look at the fraction. Let's see what we have to factor out. So we have a denominator of 15, so 1 15th. But is there something on the numerator? Is there 218? Can we divide both of those by something? 2. So we're actually going to factor out 2 fifteenths. So from the numerator is a 2, from the denominator is 15. So 2 fifteenths. And what's the smallest power? x to the negative 1. So I'm going to divide each of these by 2 fifteenths x to the negative 1. Tough one. I know this is counterintuitive to what you're used to, too. Okay, so what happens here? The 15s get factored out. If 2 gets factored out of the 200, we're left with 100. x to the negative 1 divided by x to the negative 1, gone. Yeah, reduces actually to 1. Not to be a smart aleck. Well, I just add 1. It's natural. Okay. Uh, so the 15 is factored out, and the numerator 2 is factored out, so we're left with a 9. 1 minus negative 1. 1 minus negative 1. 1 plus 1, 2. And we have difference of squares. And then answer in the original form. So let's do this first. So 10 minus 3x, 10 plus 3x. And the x to the negative 1 has to be on the bottom. So you can write it, you can just write it like this if you like. 2 over 15x. <laughs> you could also, you could also go all across and then the 15x on the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah that will work too. So you can have a line all the way. That's fine too. Alrighty, last two questions. These ones are really fun. <laughs> okay, you, I'm going to show you a method to make this a lot easier. You don't have to use this method. Once you get really good, you can just do it. Okay, uh, the easy way to solve these is use substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take A and make it X squared plus 5. Okay? x squared plus 5. We're going to do substitution. I'm going to replace the x squared with plus 5 with an a. So we're going to make it look like this. Because then all of a sudden, you don't have to use a. You could do y. I just like a's and b's. I don't know. Right now, a lot easier, hey? All of a sudden, he's not so scary. Okay, so what can we factor out? A to the 2 thirds is the smallest power. So we go 5 thirds minus 2 thirds is 3 thirds or 1. Minus 9 and A to the 2 thirds divided by A to the 2 thirds reduces out to 1. So now what are we going to do? Sub back our A value. So now A, we can't factor that any further, right? Not right now. So A is X squared plus 5. I'll put it in brackets. To the power of 2 thirds times, should move this down a bit. Sorry, there you go. And then A again, X squared plus 5, then minus 9. Ooh. What happened? Anyone else getting excited? 
No. Okay, I'm alone. X squared minus 4, which is? A difference of square. <laughs> Often, in, yeah, you'll find difference of squares. Okay, there's our answer. Oh, and why did I leave it as two thirds? Because originally it was a fractional form as an exponent, so I'm going to leave it that way. It didn't. It wasn't originally a radical, so I'm not. I'm just going to leave it. I didn't understand that. <laughs> Yeah, you don't, you mean without substitution? Yeah, yeah totally. I yeah, I think I understand. I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> exactly. Always the original form. All right, last question. So, well, you can, but it's different. So I might want to do this one with you. Yeah. There's two things. So we're going to have an A and a B. Okay. So we'll make A. Who are we going to replace with A? X plus 7, sure. And B will make it 2X minus 1. Okay. So let's rewrite this as 4A cubed. B to the 6 plus 12A Four b to the five. All of a sudden, it's really easy. Th when you sub in, there's always going to be more simplification that happens, though. Okay, what can we factor out from? Let's start with four and twelve. Four, a cubed and a to the four. A cubed, the smallest power, and b to the five. So we're left with b. You divide this by that, just the b's left over, and here only the a's. Oh, no. 12 divided by 4, 3. a to the 4 divided by a cubed is a. b to the 5th divided by b to the 5th is gone. Great. Right? So now, are you with me? Yeah? Well, wait a second. If you want, you know what step I'm skipping? I'm not writing this part. Right? I'm just I'm just literally factoring it out in my head. That's what you are you probably used to writing when you factor something out. Okay, so now what do we do? We sub. There's nothing left to do, so now we have to sub. Like there's no more simplification I could do. That's all I can do. So now we sub it back. So a was x plus seven. B was 2x minus 1. And then here we have B plus 3 times A. So B, 2x minus 1, plus 3 times x plus 7. So guess what we can simplify? The B plus 3A. Yeah. Okay. Are you with me still? We're alive. Okay, so this becomes, uh, can I just make this 3x plus 21 right now? Okay, so then we have 2x plus 3x, 5x, and then negative 1 plus 21 plus 20. Uh-oh. This might happen sometimes. GCF of 5 inside. So we're going to take out the 5. Where is it going to go? To the very front, and it multiplies with the 4. So we're going to have a 20, because we're factoring out 5 from here. x plus 7 cubed, 2x minus 1 to the 5th, x plus 4. Now we're done. Now look how much we're beautiful done. That's a 5. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, don't keep going. So that's it for today's lesson. Did everyone get that down? Because I want to go to what your assignment is. Okay, so your assignment is circle the following. Open up your assignment. Okay. The handout booklet. The handout booklet. That's where the homework is. Okay, so turn to lesson two. And it's numbers 1CE. 1CE. So circle 1C and E. Tyler's still getting his stuff out. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's up here if you need it. Two is B, D, G, I, K, N, O, S. <laughs> yeah. And three C and F. Okay. Now, of course, number three is going to be a little bit tougher. It's a challenge, but I, you're going to have a question like that on your assignment. And maybe a little bit simpler version, but something with substitution on your exam. Okay. How do you do the four yet? Hmm? How do you do that? Oh, those are, those just go online. I did, and it was like. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, one second. Okay, I'm going to end the video.